Welcome everyone to Over and Back Special Holy Cross Men's Tournament Recap Edition. I'm with just Coach Siebert here, Chris Siebert, no DePau. He wasn't there the last weekend, so I thought it made some more sense to uh, me and you. Since yeah, I know he missed it. I know he wishes he could be there. He's already looking forward to the next year. Yeah, I, he, you know, we were talking about uh, that happy Gilmore uh, skit of getting in the batting cage and toughening it up right away. Because I'm uh, just catching my breath here. That you know, it's gonna it's gonna be a long year here, trying to get get it back together. So, um, I figured we would just recap the kind of the games. We'll go from because we both played Friday night back to back, and then we both played saturday two games um those who are caring enough to listen know obviously that the unintentional team won the championship sporting my uh new yeah. Holocaust sweatshirt you got a good pep in your step right now you know it was, it's good man it's you good. had a good you had a good pep in your step this weekend you know there was a big smile on your face you know and just the feels good to wake up a holy cross winner i know it does it does. It's uh it is great. How many times have you won? Only once. Just once was that two years ago, right? Two years ago. You know, you're in the uh I, I was actually trying to think of it today when you told me when we planned this, I was trying to think on the drive home. I've only been playing 10 years. I'm sure someone can correct me and, and I'm actually sure it's cons con one is the last to do it. I don't know if in the last 10 years there's really been a lot of back-to-back winners. I know there hasn't been in the last five years. It's really hard to win back-to-back. Uh, hang, hang on so one second. Hang on one second. I'll go get the book. have the program? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll fill some dead air here. Uh, hard to win back-to-back, just like any sport, but almost like uh, – I was trying to think of why in the in Holy Cross, and this is going to be an awful metaphor, but uh, like they talk about Holy or uh, Super Bowl teams having such a hard time keeping their rosters together, and you know guys wanting more and this and that, and in Holy Cross, it's almost like the opposite. Like you win the Super Bowl, and then everyone gets older, and you yeah. bring your whole roster back, and you don't improve, you don't get better. But the thing in Holy Cross is if you don't add some new ringer every year you're getting you're missing the boat all right i'm looking here. always got to get younger and more athletic as as the unintentional proved uh, it's hard to win back to back it is and it'll be really hard for for me to do it for us to do it you could be it was for you to do for you to do it that was great. Me, me over we over there in the unintentional squad out here for us to do it for, for me uh, sponsoring the team this is a um, great this is great podcasting right here just i know started um, no book in hand not knowing our last back-to-back champion so lids slash bsn won it four years in a row but that was that was a while ago that right that, that was, was when from the, oh gee, yeah, that was from 80, 87 to 90 oh yeah. no my bad my bad uh 14 14 to 17 yeah, and then it's been all new winners every year since then, right? Pilot Fish, Hurley, McCarty, UW Health, McCarty. Oh, McCarty won twice in the last four years. Or was yeah, it says McCarthy, but it's got to be McCarty. Filling Station back in the late nineties won three in a row. Sport Co back to back in two thousand six and seven. Not easy. As nope. you were saying. Nope. Time for you to defend. I'm excited to see the unintentional title defense roster. Yeah, we've got some. We were kicking around some ideas. I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, so you're back back to high school guys next year. Well, that's what you know. I was talking to Norgard yesterday about it. He wants me. He's like, you got to go back to high school. I'm like, I know, but it's like it's really tough to win. Even though you know what, if Johnny and Milan would have been around that that second weekend, you used weekend, to be, like, all, used to be all. all talk. You used to say you were going to do it with all I high know. school guys. I know. Well, the problem is so I'm you went next year. Where you, where you, where do you want to go? You're going to start with your Xavier down at O North. I'm start. Well, Zach, you know, Kinsinger. Cause Zach, I'm obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but see, that's the thing is I told you, like I've lost, I lose. Zach will be a great Holy Cross player. Oh, I, I totally agree. Um, I lose connections like with how I know these kids after that grade, essentially. I don't know a lot of the current sophomore class. Like I've talked to Andrew Jensen about playing, but like after that, I, I got nothing really. Oh, I know Krause. Yeah. 
Oh, you'll have comp you'll have competition for Jensen. I think I already got it locked in. We'll McCarty, see. McCarty will have something to say, I'm sure. Oh yes, that is there is that is very true. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what we do next year. It's a year away. I'm not really worried about it right now, but yep. now okay. we're in right now. You hear that? Trying to go back to back, and he's not <laughs> thinking about it. Can I that enjoy the championship? Like a, sounds, like a one time, sounds like a one-time winner. That's Let me enjoy the championship for a week at least first before I start really worrying about it more. All right, there you go. There Thank you go. You're allowed to enjoy. Okay, so Friday night, we played the first game of the night. We played Keller. You Were, were you there? No, you weren't. You were coaching. That's right. Yep. So this would, be, this, would be my, this would be my recap. I don't know if Anthony Moody listens to this podcast or not, but uh, uh, you could say the first half of the game was – Moody against Nick Janowski. Uh, I've never seen. So this that was the first time like I've watched Nick play like really kind of well in person, really. Uh, I saw him sophomore year, but he was a sophomore. You know, we played him. Uh, Jameson had played against him sophomore year, but that was the first time I like really kind of first time I ever met him. He's bigger than I thought. He's taller than I thought. He's stronger than he thought than I thought. And he took it to Moody. Um it was amazing. 17 points in the first half. We finished with 31. Um, we, we ended up, I think I was, was like, I wouldn't think I was even giving you guys updates during the game. Uh, I was kind of away from my phone on Friday a little bit, to be honest. Yeah, you guys were coaching. So, I mean, we had a, we had a decent lead at half and then we were up 16 and then it went down to like two. Then we got it up to like 18 and it went down to two and we ended up winning by three. It was a game we could have lost, but that was like the one game I was worried about because I thought to myself, Anthony Moody and Alex Wellhouse might be able to outscore us. That's the only team I thought to myself, these guys could really go off. Yeah. I mean, I, Moody's awesome. I, uh, I still am scarred from him lighting me up went back when I used to think I was in shape. Uh, so to hear that Janowski and same takeaway that you had, or like I talked to him a little bit after the game of the whole, like, I, I was unfamiliar with your game. I apologize. Uh, yeah. Knew he was a shot maker. Knew, like, all the offensive stuff. Knew, like, he can score all, like, the skill and the passing. and But just the strength and, like, the physicality. Uh, was kind of surprised of how big he was, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but, no, same takeaway, obviously. And it's, you know, good for him to go at guys like Anthony Moody. Makes him, you know, confident. And Moody's played on a big stage, and he's really, 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 really good. Um, is he one of the most difficult guys to keep in front of you? Moody? I, I, yeah. I'm trying to think who else can just okay. go by you. Like, I mean, I would, I'd be going blast from the past here, but like, I remember regarding Johnny Lacey in high school and thinking that, you know, that was just absolutely impossible. I mean, there's been a, Nimrod Hilliard too. It was like a really, really shifty. Um, hard to keep in front. I mean, there's been tons of those. Trey Jefferson is probably the first guy to come to mind. No one could keep him in front one on one. Uh, I mean, McCabe, Jack Campion, been a lot of those guys. I just I remember like saying at one point during the game because Moody had hit a couple threes in the second half, and I remember just saying to the, the guys, I'm like, guys, he can go past you if he wants. If he wants a two, he's going to take a two. Like you just got to hop on his right shoulder and make sure he can't get a three off. Like. I don't care how you play him. If he wants to take a layup and go past you, he's going to go past you. You know, like I, I was just like, take away the three. If he's going to hit threes, he's going to screw us. Yeah. You need your, your other guys to be good too. You know, you yeah. found those other four to be in good position and make it. So those driving gaps aren't massive. Um, you know, one pass away and two pass away to both be ready to so, make plays. Yeah. So, um, so we win that game. We move on. And it's funny too, because we haven't even mentioned Kantu yet. Um, Kantu had 35. It's like the, the way he scores is so efficient. And so it's not like it's quiet because you're, you notice it, but you're like, Oh, I did not. How the hell did he had 35? Okay. Like that's, that was interesting. I, I think I honestly think quiet's like the nicest, most complimentary way you can say this. I mean, I've seen it too many times, but the amount of times, I've played him in CGL or watched him in CGL or played with him in CGL. And you think to yourself, Oh, they're doing a really good job. Like he, they're doing awesome. And then yeah. he has 50, he has 52, 12 rebounds and 14 assists. And he's shot 10 of 15 from three. Um, I don't know. That's 
kind of just how it always goes. Yeah. Uh, you can kind of just pencil him in for an efficient whatever he wants to do because it's all also going to come with the right pass. Still all that stuff on time. Yeah. We're and I I tweeted out that we were going to do this podcast and I I said that those two are going to deserve all the love they get here in this podcast. We're going to talk about we'll talk about it more in depth after we get through these games here. So uh so we we beat we beat Keller, move on. You guys played Tundra? Yep. Yep. Um what was the recap that you got from your guys? Uh, I mean, a lot of mixed reviews, to be honest, but um, sounds like it was a good game where kind of neither team could guard each other. Uh, we weren't really playing much defense, it sounds like, but uh, lucky to advance. Um, I uh, I didn't hear a whole lot about our offense, to be honest, other than uh, that we didn't play defense how we normally do. Well, so, you know, it was the game after us. We had won. So we all went down, obviously, to go, you know, eat fish sandwiches and drink some beer and stuff like that. And um, we I, we were just kind of keeping an eye on it. And then all of a sudden, I think it was like five minutes left, because that's when I think I started texting you guys. And I, well, I FaceTime you. That's right. Because you know, it went to double yeah. over, right? Yeah. And uh, much I watch on FaceTime, but at least double OT. Yeah. So I just remember, I, no, and no offense to Tundra, whatever, but like, I didn't, I thought you guys would handle them easily. I didn't think it was going to be you never know. I guess people start making shots. You have no idea what's going to happen, but like we all went up there with like five minutes left in the game and watched the rest of it. It was, it was a great, great, great finish. I was surprised that it was close, honestly, but um, you guys easily could have lost that game. Oh yeah. Should have lost. Could have lost. Would have lost. I mean, I don't know. There's Let's a lot see. of like, we talked even the first weekend, there were some teams that easily could have lost that, you know, that first weekend. Yeah, I mean, the three-point line, right? Like, it changes everything. And if you're playing up there, you can shoot the ball. <laughs> so, like, yeah, people say the amount of times I heard you say over the last two weeks, they were making everything in the first – or they were making everything. And it's like, well, they can really shoot. Um, and they've made a lot of shots. Like, everybody up there shoots a ton of threes. So, the just the variability of every game um, is pretty maybe, is pretty wide. Yeah, maybe it, Maybe it feels – I mean, when it's a going against you, it feels probably more exaggerated, but it's like, I feel like teams were shooting like 60% from three against us. You know, I get yeah. shooting 45%, but it seems like everyone just shoots and was shooting. What Maybe it's shitty defense. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Everyone can hit. Everyone can shoot for the most part out there. Really good shooters. It's, I don't remember what even three point line we're playing. It's what that it? like old, I think it's that old college line or whatever. It's like 20 so feet. It's like not shooting. that far. Yeah. It's a great shooting gym. Yeah. I don't know. It's a Rich shooting guys. environment. And like every team has, you know, a behemoth inside. So everybody just meets the, the you know, is tough enough inside. And then, you know, bombs a bunch of threes. Yeah. So you guys move on. So then we play each other at one o'clock on Sunday in the semis. Yep. You guys jump out. So I, I'm going to, I said something earlier and I, I'll, kind of re not retract it, but go back. If I would have known, I've never watched Alex, Alex Olson play basketball. If he's I would have known, if I was known he was going to shoot like that, I would have been like, okay, maybe stick and uh, Olsen can outscore us as well. Cause those guys went off. In that Olsen, can, Olsen can play all I'm going to say. Uh, he doesn't back down from anybody either. There's like, you know, he plays with a chip on his shoulder and he's good. Loves hooping. I, I've always loved playing with Alex Olson. Um, where did, where did he play college? Gosh, gosh. Uh, he was kind of before the – he helped kind of lead the lead the charge, so to speak. Um, was, he, was he somewhere else too? I thought I thought Elijah told me he went. He started somewhere and then went to Oshkosh. Oh, yes, he did. He walked on at uh, – he was up at – it was either like South Dakota State or Augustana, South Dakota for a year or something. Okay. I want to say it was South Dakota State, to be honest. Um but I don't know what exactly what the situation was because I'm pretty sure he played all four at Oshkosh. How old is he? Um, he would be late 20s probably or 30. Oh, okay. Yeah, he shot really well. I mean, or Austin, early 30s. Okay. I would guess late 20s to be honest. Okay. Um, Yeah, he shot well. I mean, Austin came out and was just hitting – Well, I think he had, he had four threes in the first half and they were contested and they were – I mean, Contu was on him. Yeah, Austin can score, and uh, Austin Stick, I mean, college All-American, and, like, really comfortable shooting really difficult shots. I mean, he's a difficult shot maker. I yeah. mean, 
you know, it's what he's comfortable with almost like to this, like, he's almost more comfortable with a step back with your hand, like kind of almost there, but not actually there. Then he, then, you know, it's the same exact shot. Um, so when the ball's moving and if he's feeling him, if he's, and he loves playing up there. So it's, um, no, yeah, I've seen him shoot like that many games up there to be honest. Oh yeah. I've seen it a bunch too. It's funny because he doesn't, you look at him, right? He's got this baby face, he's a bigger dude. Like, and you yeah, wouldn't yeah. that he's this like killer basketball player. You know what I mean? Like I told him I, when you guys were hanging at my house uh, in between games, I'm like, you're one of the most like unassuming, like bas- good basketball players. You know, like I always like making this like Mike Shaw. Well, you would never think Mike Shaw could shoot a basketball, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and uh, Austin's kind of like that. And so my boy and my two boys came with me, obviously Friday night. And that's the first time they saw him. And d- they were like, who's the best player on their team? And I go, Austin's probably the best player on their team. And they're like, really? I'm like, just wait, please. Just seriously, just wait. And of course he comes out and he starts shooting and my kids are like, holy shit. Like, what the hell is this? You know, I'm like, yeah, he, can, he can really score. Um, we're, uh, I think Austin, the best thing about Austin too, is like, he, he just knows the game and is a hooper, um, you know, and our, he loves it. Um, you know, so he'll be playing forever and we'll be playing a long time. And, you know, I, I know he's our, you know, the, you say he's our best player. We got, a, we got guys, but the one thing we're missing is like a true, like Holy cross ringer. So we'll be, we'll be putting some work in to give you guys a run next year. That's, we that's got a bunch true. of guys that are, we got a bunch of good second best players right now that, uh, that we just need our, we just need our guy. Got some ideas. So, so anyways, you guys jump out. You, you guys were up by 12 in the first half. Yeah. That was when I first thought we had life. You know, all day, all weekend, it's like, man, Con 2 is really good. The other, like, the guys that don't, you haven't mentioned yet. First of all, Taylor yeah. Bowley is so good at basketball. Elijah yeah. Goodman is so good at basketball. And Marcus Canigliero is the best fifth man, in, fifth option in amateur sports. Like, he was such a good screener. And then, and getting Con 2 open all the whole game. But then, you know, he scores 40 points a game in CGL when he plays uh, efficiently. So yeah. it's like, Anytime we helped off him, he made a three. Um, but no, so I, you know, the whole time I'm thinking, you know, this is going to be a tough one. We obviously shoot the ball well to start the game. And then we, we make a three to go 12 in the first half. And I'm like, we have life, we have life. And yeah. then uh, short lived. I'm just looking at, yeah, he hit, he hit three threes against you guys. Marcus. I think he was three for three. It felt like he was three for three, but well, they're just timely too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, con con one was very mad at me that not very mad, but he was like, Oh, I wish you wouldn't have told Siebert that Marcus was coming because <laughs> we had exchanged right. roster that morning or whatever. That's um, right. And then I said, Well, it's funny, you didn't even see him on the list right away. That's right. Yeah, I missed it. He was the name I missed. That's right. I forgot that. And then when I caught it, yeah, that was not one that was fun to see actually. Where did he play ball at? He was a good player at lacrosse, really good. And I mean, he's probably 40 now. I was just going to, that was my very next question is how old is he? I, I was going to guess about 40. He's a freak. And uh, he's about 40 and like, you know, I don't know when I first played against him, maybe 10 years ago. And he looks the same, moves the same. Yeah. Yeah. So good on defense, so tough, so strong. And uh, yeah, he's in really good shape. I'm sure he'll be playing for another, for a while. Yeah. When you can really shoot and you're smart, um, he, he makes the Frank, I hate, he makes the game look pretty easy. Like in all reality, like I hate to say that he's playing hard, Yeah. Um, it, but he's not working hard. I don't right. know how to say that. Like he, his mind allows him to keep the game pretty easy for himself. Yeah. So you guys are up seven at half. I'm just looking at the box score here. Up seven and a half. K2 hits a three on the first possession. And if, and it was a, it was a deflator. We, we kind of like, we were in a lull. I was mad that I was mad that when you guys started shooting too, you need to go outside, dude. You need to go play security out there. (laughs) Can you pause recording? (laughs) I can, but it'll stop. It'll, I haven't haven't tried it. So I have no idea what's going to happen if I try to do it. I'm just kidding. Hey, go take your dog out. I'll just run through scores real quick here. First half scores, like for scoring, Taylor Bowley had nine, Janowski had nine, Elijah had 10, Kantu had 13. 
And then for you guys, Olsen had 15, Austin had 14. And then a bunch of other guys with like two, four. Uh, Marcus Rue had nine. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I got a guy out there. Um, no, you're good. But uh, no, yeah, you guys kind of shot the lights out to start the second half. And that was right when we went in our lull too. So it went from up seven to down seven pretty quick there. Well, uh, I mean, Kantu had 12 points in like the first three minutes. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden we were up a point. Yeah. It's one, of those, it's one of those things. I think we talked a little bit after that or later that night where like, or people have asked me, were you nervous, nervous, nervous? And it's like, when you have Kantu on your team and even, and even Nick this weekend, it's like, I'm really not worried. Like you could tell you weren't worried. There was a, pep, just, there was a pep in Sam Gross step. You know, like, <laughs> well, for one, I'm not it, playing. You know, there was a smile. There was a, when I walked in and you had all the jerseys folded out, numerical order out on the bleachers, and I and you know, and we're we're rolling in late. And I was like, man, this is this is big, this is big time. He's ready for us today. My Caden, my my youngest is like, you you're a pretty good team manager, aren't you, Dad? And I'm like, yeah, I, I'll take it. Whatever. It's this this is so much fun for me. I'm such a basketball junkie, and like, I have I didn't play like at any level. You know what I mean? Um, well, stone left unturned for that W. So it's like. I'm just like living this now. It's like, it's so much fun for me. I, I just love basketball so much. So I, it's fun to be around. Um, but no, yeah, you, you don't get worried. Like it's even when you watch them during the, during the school year, you know, like they were down, I think to Whitnall at half, or it was close against Whitnall at half one of those games. And it's like, it's going to be like a 30 point game. Like, and it turns out to be a 30 point game. Like you just, he's, you just don't worry. He's been in those moments. And I mean, when you, you're right. When you have a guy like that, it's easy to not worry. Um, but, uh, no, you could tell that you guys were comfortable being down and just kept plugging away. Yeah. Uh, so I think one of the most impressive things with K2 that with like the way we were guarding him was like every time he posted up or like drove, we just fouled him like crazy on the ground, just yeah. absolutely hammered him. And still two days later, I am hurting so bad. And I'm sure that he has no idea that we, he was as if he we were a bunch of gnats you know he's so big and strong i can't imagine what high school guys felt like playing playing against him you know he he punished grown men over and over and over and over and like you said with nick being bigger and stronger that was the same that was same takeaway there is that he's just they're both so much bigger and stronger than uh than i was expecting him to be um really wish got to play against uh that you had bennett up there it's too bad yeah, yeah, Bennett couldn't play because he got hurt at state, obviously. So um, so we ended up winning by what 12, I think it was. One of those just kind of late pull-aways. Although wow, it was tight because Austin hit a three to cut it to six, but then it was 194, I remember with like 20. Yeah, seconds. that's when Austin hit that three. And yeah. That was when I uh, had my one regrettable moment of you yell, you, you, you make it you make it through the weekend so good. You behave so well with officials, and then you start yelling at officials right when you're gonna lose the game, you know. I don't know what that, what's up with that. That's what coaches, all all coaches, right when you're going to lose, you start blaming it on other people. So you, you you blamed it on the refs that that's why you guys lost to us. Oh no, not yeah, yeah, they were awful in the last. Oh 20 yeah, the one. So once let's we were talk, down. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, 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 I know. No, let's talk about the one call though. Um, because you guys were trying to follow Elijah. Elijah's like, I I would do, I'd do the same thing. Not the greatest. Oh, yeah, thing. it's whatever. We the game was over. The game was. Well, over. Yeah, no. But it's funny because, and we talked about it at my house. It was like, you know, Austin's like, I grabbed him. Like, I grabbed him. And I'm like, I'm like, from our angle, it did not look like you did. So it was basically like the play where you're, you're screaming fire, you're screaming fire. And then you're playing, and then you like, you're playing two hand touch on recess football, but rather than like really fouling the guy. Yeah. And, and, and to be honest out there, it was not a foul for the first 35 minutes. Sure. Right. Yeah. So like kind of one of those situations yeah so um nick finishes yeah, you guys won by two three possessions yeah um wow. you probably covered the spread i put it at nine and a half so you did you did on i wish i knew we should have stopped fouling <laughs> um well yeah because at the end i'm like i'm wondering if they're just gonna call this right you it's like a minute left and you're like down by 10 you're like ask her whatever we're done good game you know and then you guys get the turnover and and Austin hits that three and it's a six point game. And I'm like, okay, well now this is not over. But yeah. Keep playing. 
So Nick finishes with 24. Contu finishes with 43. He's got 30 in the second half. I I don't know. Again, we'll talk about it at the at at the end when we go we go over like all tournament team and stuff like that. But incredible game. Yeah, he was loaded. He was unbelievable. Uh eight for ten from three or something. Um, nine for eleven. Nine for eleven. Yeah, there you go. And I don't know what he shot in the final. Um eight for ten. Yeah. I felt like, I felt like we didn't they weren't wide open, but uh he makes them wide open though. Like it, yeah, I, just I, jumps I over like you at the end. I feel like in his brain, it's, but, it's wide yeah, open. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter if there's a hand there or not, you know. No, he doesn't need a lot of room. And now you know, still feeling sore, just the worst news ever. Con one sends out the schedule of this week for CGL. And well, K2 gets to put 50 on me again tomorrow. Um, so it's gonna be a nice drive over to Milwaukee to for again. It makes me uh, want to drive down, but I don't know if I'm going to. We actually there's a couple subs uh for it'll be a fun game. Uh McNabb and the uh, and oh. no I don't want to mispronounce Nolan's name from uh, Marquette, but Minasali. Yeah, that's I've always thought it was Minasali, but uh so we have McNabb and Minasali and nice. they have and they have K two and Tim Franks. Yeah. So it'll be a good good game of and they have um feel bad now that I didn't mention DJ Derek Johnson from they, uh, they as in they as in me, as in my team. Yeah, your team, your team, Derek Johnson, young kid going to Loris. Um, I like his game. Gonna be a good D three player, uh, catch and shoot guy that kind of just like gets it. Um, so it'll be there's some good young guys uh, along with some of us washed up dudes. Yeah. All right, and then in the other game, McCarty beats uh, Hurley Insurance. Yeah, actually, kind of closer than I thought. Hurley's they're still solid. I mean, they they run the best offense of any team there. Not yeah. even close. Um, and they just aren't dumb. Um. You don't get easy baskets. Chris Breyer still competes like anybody in the in the tournament. Yep. Um, he he, if he could still finish layups like he used to be able to, he'd still be the best player in the tournament. But he just he is he gets it and kind of makes everything go. But then they had a bunch of other guys that can really really shoot and they're really really smart. Um, I mean they're going to be really good again next year in their late thirties. And they made that they brought another guy. I mean I don't know who that guy they brought this year was. Yeah. That, Bald dude, yeah, he shot yeah. the lights out. Yeah, so, um, I think he went like six for six from three. Um, we should mention his name because it's you know let's do uh unless he's not on here. Yeah, I mean that's the thing they cat they play really high level pickup and open runs in Chicago, so like they'll always bring good a good other guy. He's not on the uh, roster, I don't think. His last name was Revis or Rivas or something. Yeah, he's um, not on the roster. But he played overseas for like a, a long time. They were saying, and uh, okay. so he definitely helped. I mean, they ton of talent. I think it's kind of dismissive of them to say that you were that like we expected it to be a blowout a little bit. I mean, I, I don't want to say like like McCarty's really good, but but that Hurley team, really really good players. Um, okay. Different era of Lawrence basketball. Um, like really really good team. Uh, and yeah, that McCarty team's good. Chandler Deekvoss just keeps getting more athletic. Pullman is. Is Pullman's Pullman and can guard any? I when Pullman guarded, uh, I was like, I wanted to text Kellett, but uh, Pullman just can still guard. Like it's amazing, and and handle the ball like the way he he picked up and kind of got uh, into Nick a little bit one time, and I was just so impressed with the way he moved his feet. Still at whatever age he is now, I guess yeah. he's younger than I think he is because I always think of Pullman as closer to my age because I play because we he like played with us some but he was really young playing with us. So he's probably in his late twenties still. Or, I was going to say, I thought he was like 30 ish. Yeah. So he's younger than I thought, it, but, but still he's awesome. Um, no, that McCarty team's good. Made some good pickups too. Yeah. John, so, has them. John has them moving and playing good. John yelling at officials from the bench, yelling at everyone from the bench. No. And, uh, smooth, smooth. Still has got his post game. I love the McCarty teams. The McCarty team will be, they'll be in a second. they will be a final Sunday Holy Cross team for another five yeah, years. Probably. So, okay, we'll get to the championship in a second. So you guys play Hurley in what is probably the most undesirable game of the, of the tournament. Yeah. It's Third a tough, game, but it's a tough one, but it's always competitive. I mean, it is, I don't know. It, 
you get out there and people are showing up for the the championship you always feel like you're going to play in a, in an empty gym but then people want to come back for the championship so it's there's people there and energy's still good uh the game was good again the one thing about that Lawrence team is like they run the best offense of anybody there um they screen they grab on their screens they do everything they need to do to create any bit of space and then the guys using their screens also make the right reads and right cuts and stuff. So they're so hard to guard. And then once you're tired and sore and old, they're even harder to guard. So just when they can mix wide open layups into all the contested threes that are, they're going to make, um, they're hard to beat. And I thought we were going to beat them. And I've talked to about, I've talked to you about this on this podcast before something I irrationally value on this in, in coaching we were up six with like 30 seconds left in the first half. I think with the ball. You guys had it up to 10 in the first half. I oh, know. we were we were rolling in the first half. Yeah. It's just the same as against you guys. But the but but the last 30 seconds of the of the first half, I always think is so big in basketball. And I think we had we were up multiple possessions with the ball at the end of the first half. Had a turnover, they hit a three in transition, and then I think we they they ended up tied at halftime. Yeah. Just yep. on a goofy six point run at the end of the half. And I, I think those are so huge. And they scored the first possession out of the half. So it's like you go from controlling the game to down without even really getting a shot. Um, huge swing. Uh, but Ben Rosenblatt killed us. He's a he's a monster. Been a monster for a long time. Another CGL guy. Okay. I didn't even see if you guys lost or won. I I missed I missed like the last two minutes because we're just getting ready for our game and I had to ask Hurley during it what happened but what did you guys end up losing by i mean it was good it was a competitive game the whole way yeah good. i can't remember the final to be honest okay so championship is us against less than, pretty... less than 10 less than 10 more than two yeah um did you you stayed for the first half well you were downstairs but did you watch the first half of our game yep okay Most so we it. jumped out we jumped out immediately we were up 30 to 13 yep um I never at that point thought to myself, this is going to be a 30 point win. Cause I kept on saying, I think Cade was sitting next to me and then my buddy Evan, I'm like, Brust is going to have a run. Brust is going to have a 10 run by himself and it'll chip away and get back. Just it's going to happen. So we were up 13 and a half roughly. I'm trying to think. Do you yeah, remember? Something like that. Something like that. Um, well, here I can probably check. It's funny you 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 say that way on, on the leading end. It it felt in the stands the other way. I'm not gonna lie. And it I, was know McCarty, be I know McCarty is loaded. Um, I know those guys are really good. Uh, but it when when you guys built that lead and I mean K two started shooting the ball so well and yeah, you know it felt it felt it felt safe. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think we, I didn't. I never Chandler thought definitely. Was... Uh, Chandler gave Elijah that little run in the beginning that like, and that's when I was like thinking like, oh, are they gonna have? Are they gonna have to double Chandler? And if you would have to had to ch double Chandler, he's too good, and the rest of their team is too good. Like, yeah, Arians, bro. I mean, they got so much shooting. Carter, Relker. They. I mean, they got that McCarty team's really good. But uh, once you guys kind of Chandler got hurt too. When did when did Chandler get hurt? That was in the second half. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, because they started out, I think, 6 nothing on us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was 43 to 31 at half. So, Nick yeah, had 12. Like they had to work harder for their buckets than you guys. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Nick had 12 at half. Conto had 21. Yeah. Um, second half starts, and Bruss goes on his run, which is what I – like, I didn't think we were going to lose because of who we have, but, like – I knew it was going to get tight because of Brust. I knew he was going to hit some shots. Some shit was going to go weird. It's just nat. It's human. Nat it's like just natural to like let up a little bit, like to kind of coast. You'd think that these guys, how good they are, wouldn't, but it just, it happens. I think um, they cut it to two. I would say go from more of the other ways is like good players. Don't just lie down when they're down 22. Well, like, true. That's yeah. Good players sure. going to throw a punch. Yeah. A good team's going to, going to do something. Yeah. And, uh, McCarty Law is not losing by 40 to a lot of to there's not a lot of teams that are beating McCarty Law by 40 outside of real teams. Right. Do you do you remember uh 
Did they just get it to two or did they end up tying it? I can't remember. Uh, I don't know if it, I'm not sure. I wasn't watching the uh, score that close. Honestly. Oh yeah. Cause then you went downstairs, right? Downstairs. Yeah. You went downstairs. Mm-hmm. So um, there was a play. It was so funny. It was on in the second half, right in front of our bench. There was like a little kind of just some action going like kind of in the top in the wing and Pullman and Volker kind of like run into each other a little bit. Like, I don't know if they're miscommunicate, you know, miscommunicate or whatever, but like, Contu gets free on the wing. Like he's the one guy, guy that gets open. And so Pullman's like running out and he just, you know, Contu shoots it and Pullman like runs to our bench and he's like, F me. Like didn't even, it was like a Steph Curry. Didn't even look at the three. He knew it was in. Like he just knew it was going in. Yeah. I mean, same thing. I mean, those suck. Uh, but K2, same deal. He did a step back on me one time uh, when I thought he was driving hard left. So I'm like sliding to try to turn him. And, he, and then he steps back immediately and rises up. And my, you know, you're trying to move forward, but your 35 year old legs just get stuck in the ground. And, yeah. uh, you know, you just look at the ground before he even shoots it. Um, no, he doesn't miss good looks. Yeah. So we win by 10, 10 ish, 12 ish, something like that. I think again, 11, I think it is. I think it was 87 or nine. I think 87, 90, 87 to 78, I believe. Nick has 18, Kantu those has 39. Deflating, uh, those are deflating opponents when you screw up defensively and, like, they take a shot and you don't even bot. Like, I don't know, different type of dude. Like, normally an open three gets taken, you're like, all right, let's rebound this. But yeah. Canigliero, same thing. I was I was in the game one time when we kind of screwed up a possession defensively. He just got wide open and, you know, I'm, like, deflated. And at the same time, I'm like, that's your fit. Like, third, you could argue he's your second player you could argue he's anywhere second to five but you know we were kind of guarding him as five um and still you guys were loaded holy cross champions well you mentioned and so you mentioned when chandler got hurt so that was a huge play because it was i think at that point it was like a two or three point it was pretty close and he gets hurt and their team just stops i don't know why because we had the ball right and i get like there's two thinkings like it's well hey it's a guy hurt stop the game the guy's hurt but that's not the rule. The rule is you keep playing, obviously, because we have the possession of the ball and then you wait until you get it. And then, the, you know, it stops. So we come down on like a four on one break, I think, because all those guys just kind of stopped and Bowley hits a three in the corner, like just a wide open. It would have been a dunk or a layup from anyone. Bowley has a corner three and he, and he drills it. We go up like it must have been put us up by like five or six or something like that. That was when I'm like, I think this is over now. And then Chandler was out. I mean, he got hurt, obviously, which is a huge loss. But I thought that was a really, really big play. Um, yeah, big, but just some big shots by a lot of guys. Marcus hit. Marcus hit. Like I said, Marcus's threes were just like timely. I think. Yeah, he doesn't miss. Doesn't yeah, he miss. in the second half. I remember that was big. So yeah, so we so, win. Um, who on your uh, team got all tournament team? Uh, Austin Stick and John Abercamp. Okay, do they just do the top four teams for all tournament team? Um, I think that, I think you probably can make it from one of the lower teams, but, uh, you wouldn't be there to receive your, the bag likely. Right. Uh, well, you got, yeah. So they, well, I, they, they I think it would have to be a pretty special player. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what I thought. I just, they were not, they announced it. And I'm like, it's only from those four teams. I can't remember who made it from Hurley. It's one thing I respect about Holy Cross up there. Those guys, they, you know, Kakana fan, like they, they value winning, uh, and they respect good basketball. I I had such a good conversation with a dude in the in the stands, and honestly, I, it was while the game was going on, so I didn't uh, like get his name or like focus yeah. enough. But he was like cheering for our team, so I figured that he was like a family member of. Uh, and Andy Hurley's gonna love this if 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 Andy Hurley ever lifts us to this. And he and he's like cheering for us. I was like, you know anybody on our team? He's like, nope. But I'm a most valuable fan up here, and you know Andy Hurley's been complaining to officials for years up here so i want to see uw health take it to those guys oh and, that's uh, hilarious you know and i just you know i just that's what it's all about uh holy cross is just a bunch of just hoops junkies and it's good good hoops and andy hurley is the man uh so it makes it even better yeah um so we had obviously contu was all tournament team nick made all tournament and uh elijah goodman made all tournament for us that's probably justified. I could have seen Bowley getting it too. But did he miss a game? Bowley didn't play Friday. Yeah, it was probably justified for just yeah. the game. Yeah, so it's a nice, a couple nice Sunday pickups you guys 
to made for the semifinal against UW yeah. Health. Well, but the thing is too is I, I don't know if you said it or someone said maybe I don't know who said it, but like you get someone like Taylor Bowley who averages like 50 points a game in CGL or 40 points a game, and he comes on this team and he's like, like there was one game I don't think it took a shot in the first half. Yeah, I'm about to preach a little bit. And if there's anything that I could say that any young kids could take away from this podcast, there's an ultimate skill. And if you want your game to translate from high school to college, it's like, how do you bring value to a team when you know you're not the best player anymore? Like if you're a senior in college or a senior in high school, you were the best player on your team. You're going to play D3. There's 20 other dudes that are just like you. Yep. You are going to have to be willing to sacrifice and not take dumb shots that you took to get your numbers in high school or whatever it is. And Taylor Bowley is capable of being the best player on – he's capable of scoring 30 points a game for, for your Holy Cross team. Yep, for uh, sure. But, but he also knows that, like, for us to be the best team, for for the, for us to be the best team, like, K2 needs to score an efficient 40, and I need to help that happen. And, and you know, all, while also being aggressive, but – you know, giving him space and staying out of the way and making plays for him. Yeah, it's interesting. And those guys that are willing to sacrifice are great players. Like, you know, there's a the amount of dudes that are in the NBA right now that could score 20 points a game, or or I'll say not even in the NBA that yeah. could score 20 points a game, but they're not willing to sacrifice to score 10 points a game and actually help their team. Yep. But are like, you know, cost themselves dollars. Like that's all over the place. And you know. Con two is one of those guys who understands that with like the way he, you know, he's been playing CGL forever and putting together a Holy Cross roster. He put, he got guys that are willing to sacrifice. And, uh, you know, as he advances in basketball, I'm not going to say that he needs to let, he's a stud, but like his ability to like fill so many different hats will allow him to like translate to like level and level and level. He understands that there's more ways than one to bring value to a team. Yeah, Con Con one was talking about. Well, he sent a message to a bunch of us and said it was so similar to like when he started playing out here. He was taking, he was like the young guy, you know. And it was so it's it's so cool to watch like with our team, like all these older guys. I mean, they're not older, late twenties, you know, whatever it may be. Um, understand that for us to be successful, Con to and Nick are the ones that are going to have to score, and like they get out of their their egos and everything, get out of the way for these two eighteen year olds to be like the focal point of our team. And that's the best, that's the best version of our team. You know, yeah, I mean, high character dudes, you talk to Taylor Bowley or Elijah Goodman or Marcus Canigliaro or Bruginks for, or Marlowe for, or for, you know, for, for two seconds and you know, you had good people. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing is, you know, we've talked so much about Contu and Nick, Nick's the kid knows how to play too. Like he understands when he needs to take a shot or when he needs to move the ball. He had one of the most insane passes I have ever seen. I've actually screen recorded it. I'll text you guys on the side. He, he, it's on a, like a fast break and he's on, he's in the backcourt and Contu's coming up the left-hand side and there's like three guys and he just threads this needle and like leads when you, when you, when you see it and you, and he throws this pass, you're like, this shit's going way out of bounds. And it's like Contu reaches out left hand, grabs it, layup. It was unbelievable um so i think a lot of times you don't realize like these kids like nick nick and Kantu score a ton but they see the game and they see the floor so well um and you know Kantu averaged almost 40 40 points a game if if he if he he could have scored 20 and had 20 assists if he really wanted to you know what i mean like nick's the same way like he nick's not out there chucking and ball hogging like he's making yeah, the right making the right play they see the game care about the right stuff uh, yeah. i mean nick's a mf -er for sure and you know, Kantu, one of the things I'm most impressed with, and granted, I don't know if Shire, how Shire would feel about it, but like he's playing in the Holy Cross Championship, tips away a post entry pass to, I think it was Deke Foss, and got on the ground, like first guy to the ground, and had multiple 25, 30 year old men dive right on top of him. He's the first guy up, you know, not hurt. And then, I, you know, I remember a possession, you guys, they, someone screwed up he kind of like screwed up a communication on a switch and 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 mccarty hits a three and i swear to you it was the most frustrated con two was the entire weekend i you know you see his face and how mad he is about defensive mistakes that's like that's the type of stuff that his college staff will love and and nick same way like i say he's a he's an mf'er and that's his best trade is how locked in he is and how bad he wants to just win um 
no, he did it on defense too. Yeah. I, we were in the, uh, after the game, we were obviously in line, just kind of waiting for the sweatshirts and trophy, the presentation and stuff like that. And I was standing next to Contu and we were just kind of talking. And I said, I love Nick's not give a shit attitude. Like he is, that kid is awesome. Like his, his attitude and how he approaches basketball and like just how he plays like a lot of 18 year olds go back to the game against Friday night. A lot of, a lot of 18 year olds would have been chirped at by Anthony Moody. You know, Moody's been had played, has played pro professionally, you know, overseas for forever. A lot of kids would have just been like, Oh God, what the hell? I'm scared. You know, like been scared oh, and yeah, for sure. is like, all right, here we go. And it fires him up. And he just went right at him. Like he's such a, it's, that's such a unique personality and unique trait to me as like for an 18 year old to have that, like, the balls and like just the attitude of like screw you who the hell are you you know yeah totally i mean it takes a unique per personality to be as successful as he is yeah. and uh to go play at the level he's going to play at um so it'll help him um but the and i were talking on the way up and he goes you know how do we win or whatever and we're like you know we got to probably keep the, the if we if if the score is above x we probably don't have a chance. You know, we were thinking that it needs to be something in the sixties to something in the seventies. And, and when I looked up at halftime and I saw, even though we're up seven, when I saw 51, 44, I was like, this is not, this is not good. You know, cause if each team take 23s again in the second half, we're not making more than them again. Yeah. Well, that same thing, like I mentioned before about how I was waiting for the brush run, I said the same thing to my kids when we were down at halftime. I'm like, we haven't gotten the con to run yet. Like we're going to get a con to like yeah, sex yeah. Here where we're going to, we're going to make our run. And that's what happened in the second half right away against you guys. Yep. So, well, I'm hoping I get some payback tomorrow night on UNCGL. Probably not going to happen. Um, so con to one MVP clearly. And one also most popular player, which I, that kind of is not a surprise first. That surprises me that he was the first player ever to do that though. No, I would agree with that take. I would have thought for sure that someone else would have done gotten double dipped on that. I would agree with that take. Um, but honestly, doesn't the high school like star win most popular player a lot? And and the most and the the high school star has he won? Have they won before? Did Halle Burton win? I don't know. I don't think Halle Burton won at all. Um, let me see if it's in here. I think they lost in the championship. That would have been two thousand. What high school class is he? McCabe, well, McCabe won it, of course, because he was Kakana. Really? Yeah, McCabe won it. It's right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, Moody won it last year. Moody's good, man. So, do you want to know the most amazing stat or thing that I heard ever? Hmm. Khan won has never won an MVP. Really? That is surprising. Isn't it? Surprising. Who won it when they were winning in the mid thousands? Nordgard. Um, I don't know. I gotta find the MVP ones. Mets. Uh, Nordgard, I saw one. Okay. Um, Steve Baker. Steve Baker definitely won one. Baker, one. Deion James, Moody twice. Uh, Deion James. Oh yeah, Baker. Forgot they had Baker and Moody and Con. Metzger. Seems like a pretty good team. Yeah. That was a good recipe to go back to back. Norgard won it in 2012 and also won really it in 1999. So, um, but I said, I, I asked this question. So you're going to have K2 help you next year with your back-to-back -back while he's doing his draft prep? We'll see. He, he'll be the first guy on the floor again. <laughs> he'll be the first guy on the floor again. Guys fouling, the, fouling him and won't even feel it. Well, ideally, he won't be able to play because he will be at the final four. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I posed this question to the, to the Holy Cross guys after we were, I was there later drinking and stuff. Uh, is that the greatest performance ever in Holy Cross history in a tournament? I knew you had a pep in your step that weekend. It is, <laughs> isn't it? Is it the greatest GM? Is it the greatest team manager performance? Is that what you're uh, asking? About? I'm more, you know, that's a con one thing that, that I didn't do a whole lot. I don't, you know, I don't know half these guys. I've met these oh, guys uh, time, you know, like. K2, yeah, I'm sure it's up there. I think it is. Like, the Holy Cross guys were like, I think so, yes. I think it probably is, yes. I'm sure it's up there. I didn't see Nordgaard when he was at the peak of his powers. Um, I mean, I don't know how many people have averaged 40 points a game there. 
Yeah, no. And to do it, and then do it in the way that he did. He did it. I think he shot. I'll have to ask his dad. I think he shot sixty percent from three for the weekend for the whole tournament. I mean, on Championship Sunday, he was seventeen for twenty-one. Yeah, from three in one day. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's the greatest team. Maybe it's the greatest team in Holy Cross history. <laughs> and they were and they were and we were beating them 51 44 without you depau yeah, at halftime yeah, yeah. that we were beating the greatest team ever could have depau in there locking someone down did you let uh did you let your uh studs keep their uniforms of course yeah that was nice of you good job go pub go pub the podcast where, where wherever you can yeah of course yeah to quote danny hurley sam you better get uw health now <laughs> um what else did I want to ask about or talk to you about? So I do, I do just want to circle back with, with Kantu and Nick. Kantu is clearly the best player there, right? Without a doubt. Like. Next question. Okay. Um, I want to take this little, this little, little tangent here. I don't know how many Duke listeners we have. So I'm on Duke Twitter. Cause I'm on Duke. I'm a Duke fan. Right. So I just, I'll catch stuff here and there. And there is, it's funny because like, there is this like belief from a lot of Duke fans. You'll read stuff like, oh, Knipple's not going to get any minutes. He'll probably transfer after his freshman year and all this shit. And I'm like, you guys have no effing clue. Like none. And like, I was bitching about it to Caden and Caden's like, dad, like Kantu doesn't exactly look like, you know, you would think that he's going to come in and do it, you know, what he does. And I'm like, yeah. I know, but like, it drives me nuts. So all the Duke fans that are listening right now, I have no idea if he's going to start right away. I do not know. He is going to play a ton of minutes for Duke next year because he is that good. He has got a college ready body. He has got a professional ready body. He can play. You know, I was talking to Hottenstein after our game on early, you know, on Sunday. And he's like, I don't get it. He's like, how, like just off the ball, like off the ball stuff, the way he moves, where he's cutting, what he does. Like he goes, He's 18 years old. How the hell does he know how to play basketball like this? Like, I don't, I don't get it. It blows. He was, Hottenstein was blown away, blown away. And yeah. I'm like, well, he's been playing with adults for the last, you know, five years, whatever. Like, and he's always been, he's always been a smart basketball he's player. Always been so smart. Walls yeah. does a great job too. Um, I mean, he teaches similar kind of stuff, but the, uh, but yeah, he's, he's had to do it for a long time. Um, no, I agree with everything that you just said. Um, Pullman and I were messing with people downstairs. We were like, we had a little wager going. We we're like, let's try to get someone to say something stupid. And we do. I walk up to Chandler and I go, "What do you think about Con too? Is he is he really fast enough to play?" And then <laughs> Chandler just looks at me like I have four heads. And then we go over to Arians and go, "You know, is K two really athletic enough to?" He looks at me again like I'm just like the stupidest guy ever. So yeah. it's like. Everybody gets it, man. I don't know. He, he's gonna get. He's gonna get there right, right. You know, and blow people away. Yeah. Right away. You know that's and that's the thing that and Jeff and I were talked about this yesterday a little bit. Like that's the one thing that people say about him is I don't. Is he athletic? He's athletic. Oh, he's a freak. He's he a is freak. athletic. Absolute so freak. again, all you Duke fans who don't think he's athletic, or, he's gonna play. I'm telling you. And he, do we agree? He's going to the NBA, right? I don't know if it'll be in one year, but it. I'm not. Wouldn't be surprised if it is. Keep working, K two. But yeah, like, he is. This kid is unbelievable. Um. So all you Duke fans that are listening, don't worry. I, I know we got Cooper Flag coming. You are going to be blown away by him. I know you're going to be blown away by Kantu Knipple. It is unbelievable how good he is. Um, I, love, I love your line. I'm putting that one on a mantle. All you Duke fans that are listening. What? <laughs> that should be your slogan. Unintentional Podcast Network. All you Duke fans that are listening. Well, I've got some. It's funny because I've got some Duke Duke like podcast people that I talk to on Twitter. Like They've reached out to me because when I had Kantu on, whatever. So I talked to them here and there. And so there's one guy I'm talking to. I said, I was giving him updates of what Kantu did. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a podcast, but he's like, all right, sweet. I'll, I'll post it on my blog, whatever. So like, and I've been going back and forth with him. I'm like, just trust me. This he's going to be fine. Like he's not going to get min- like tiny minutes and then transfer out. He's going to surprise anyone who does not think that he can, that he can play at that level. Like, and I don't know why, why do people not think that he want, he led the EYBL in scoring. Maybe our first, uh, with all the Duke fans listening, maybe the first advertisement on the podcast will be some like Durham related business. Ooh, maybe. I'm. By the way, I'm gonna have both those guys on the podcast too. Contu's coming on again, and Nick's coming on too. Cool. So I'll have That'll those guys on probably in. 
I told Kanto I'd have him on after CGL, after we win the CGL, CGL championship, I'd have him on. The, the other thing about Kanto that's going for him that that's going to help him is he's, he's crazy. He's crazy. Yeah. And then what I'm saying is this, he, he has 30 points in the second half, right? He comes up to me after the game. It's, you know, not in my face. He's joking about it, but he's like, it's a big boy game, huh? It's a big boy game, huh? He goes, which one of you guys chirped me that it's a big boy game? We at, we ask all around and it was no one on our team. It was a fan or, a, or the ref. Oh, really? And he just like used some sort of like, you know, he used some sort of intrinsic extra thing, but like told himself that it was our, t- our team that told him that. You know, it was on that play at the end of the half when he like he got drilled into the bleachers. I mean, the pass led him. The pass led him a little bit. Sure. Oh, yeah. I would be doing making the the un, the uncatchable signal. Um, but he doesn't uh, complain much, though. You have to admit, like he doesn't say a whole lot. Of, he like, never complains. He usually, never when complains. he says anything, it's like it's probably warranted. He never complains. Yeah. He did tell me I made a bad pass, though. It's the first time I've ever heard him talk trash. But it's it's awesome, and. So we can wrap that up. I mean, it's, I, we can't, we could sit here for hours and talk about how good Kantu is. It's just, it's, I, I have friends that like, I've told, you know, like they know I've, I've known them and I'm like, you guys got to come watch him at Holy Cross. And then they're, they're like, they are kind of in that, they were in that camp of like, okay, really, is this kid any good, you know? And then I talked to them, you know, like after the game and like yesterday and they're like, I, I can't believe what I just saw. Like, I couldn't believe it. And even the same thing with Nick and Nick on like on Friday when he was at Moody, like they're like, like one of my, one of my friends has like a 11 year old. I think he has fifth grader or whatever. And he's like, Nick Janowski is my favorite basketball player. I like love just that. loved it. Loved him. Loved him watching him Friday night. You know? So he was like, he wanted to come back. He was there there on Sunday for both games. Cause he wanted to watch Nick and, and Kantu, you know? That's um, what it's all about. Hottenstein's kid. I'm sure it was the same way. Yeah. Um, you know, the, those kids were kid in a candy shop. But, and we, you know, and so, so we, we, we're, we've talked enough about Kanto, obviously, but like, we talked a little bit about Nick as well over the weekend. Like, that's the first time I said previously, that was the first time I kind of got to watch him. And I was like, ah, you know, I mean, like, I, obviously he's good. Like, but it's like, where, where's the level? Like where, you know what I mean? I, I, he is going to be completely fine at Nebraska. I yeah, he'll be good. He's, I mean, he's, he, he's a competitor and elite level shot making. Um, And they'll, you know, they'll help him with. You know, his next step is ability to, like, use his shot making to help him, like, blow by people. Yeah. Um, like, you talk about your favorite player you ever had. Who's your favorite player ever? J.J. Reddick. J.J. Right? He went to college as kind of just, like, that move off the ball um, and, like, catch and shoot guy. But at the end, as people were running him off the line, like, he was so good at that, like, push dribble into the middle to, like, pass to Sheldon Williams or, like, hit those little runners. I think as Nick improves his ability to like get paint touches and like make plays in the big 10, um, it's kind of his next step. Cause he, I mean, he gets it defensively. He's big enough and competitive enough. Um, he'll be able to guard ones and twos. He shoots it and he takes the right types of shots. Um, he can, he'll be able to score within the pick and roll and play within the pick and roll. I just think, uh, kind of the ability to like go by that close out and make the play when someone's running him off the three point line, when he's like, he's going to be a scouted dude in the big 10. Yeah. So I don't, I don't follow Nebraska Twitter, but all you Nebraska fans, all you Nebraska fans that are listening, all you Nebraska fans listening, you are going to get, you are getting a good one. All you Huskers down in Lincoln, you are going to be blown away by Nick Janowski. He is. And it's, I I, I love when they pronounce the names at Holy Cross. Some of me are so wrong, but, um, Nick's Nick's gonna be. I can't wait to watch him next year too. It's gonna be so much fun. Oh, he's gonna be a beast. And so, and and I think it's a good program fit too. Like with the whole like personality fit with the whole Hoiberg thing, and you know, brand new kind of newer, younger facility, kind of new Big Ten power. I, it's a good opportunity for him. I'm excited to watch him. Yeah. So, I will say, you know, we it's so much fun. Obviously, watching the games and things like that. But by far, the most fun I think is just hanging out there with everyone. You know, just talking about the games and st- like, I had so much fun. Like after we went, we were just sitting there, just talking to Kantu and Nick. Like they're just so enjoyable to listen to. You know, they're like two opposite kids. They're, they're I think they're pretty tight for the most part. They're good friends, um, but they are, they're just enjoyable. They're just nice kids. Like it's so, it's so refreshing to like watch these kids that are awesome at basketball, and then you meet them and you get to talk to them, and they're like. I told Nick after I told Nick after the game, I go, Nick, I just met you Friday. You are one of my most favorite people ever. Like I just, just so much fun to talk to, you know? 
Um, can, I, can, I, can, I I the most... can I share that picture for the uh, for the for the podcast YouTube stream of you three together? How happy you look! Oh God, it's great. I'm like, it's always, it's, get up. We're getting a picture. It's always fun to uh, it's always fun to sit at the winner's table, Sam. It is. But I think the podcast. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, that's it doesn't show how happy he is. It's hard to like kind of see his face, I think. But uh that's just bad, bad old school podcasting showing a showing a photograph. That's all right. What's on it's on you? This is on YouTube. People can see it. If you're on, some if you're of the Husker, some YouTube. of the Husker fans listen on YouTube at least. Right, right. But they're just it's just and I you know, they're just yeah, they're I can't just say, I can't say our table had has as fun of a vibe um with our fourth place plaque um but shaw came over and said that was like his fifth fourth place yeah sh ever. shaw says shaw says he has the most uh holy cross losses in the state of wisconsin over yeah, that. yeah that's what he said to us um because uh, how many times he's lost twice on sunday he's fine uh, good thing is though he's on the unintentional team for cgl so he's gonna get a he's gonna get a championship this year anyways um, what's your record in that league? Anyways, are we done with Holy? Well, let's should we put a bow on Holy Cross. Are we done with it? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I want to. I want to say again, like, and I put it on Twitter. Like, Lee's like the director there, and but there's a lot of yeah, dudes there. Like, Lee. thank you, Holy Cross. It is the greatest tournament. It is so awesome. It's so much fun. Look, you look forward to it every year. Never disappoints. It's I. Anyone who is listening to this podcast that can get to the Holy Cross tournament, get there. It is yeah. worth it. It is so worth it. I think the coolest thing about it is like, you know, I, we've played in all the men's stuff. Like they've the Nagani and the sawdust and they've all tried bringing in a big cash prize and all this. And they've tried competing with, with Holy cross, but what they never, what no tournament does anywhere is how well they treat the players and the, and, and make the experience for the fans and everything. So like Holy cross will never be dethroned no matter what the, as long as they're giving out, as long as he's giving out those gray sweatshirts, the best players will keep going back there. Yeah. So thank you to Holy Cross. It's awesome. I, I can't stress it enough. If you haven't been there, you got to get there. So, um, uh, yeah, I was going to say the only other thing about your team, um, that we haven't given really as praises to is like, yeah, I, I feel like we're leaving people out. I know like your other guys are just so good that I just, the only thing that I wanted to say, it's like the ability to sacrifice, right? And like Bowley's Bowley's ability to sacrifice, great. The Canigliero's ability to sacrifice, great. I just like part of me wishes that Elijah was on his own team and to see because I don't know if you've ever seen Elijah as a star. Like I think Bow Bowley's nasty, nasty, nasty. But there's like like he is so good playing with Kant, and and I'm sure he'd be amazing on his own team but I'd, I'd i'd be really curious to see how good elijah could do if he like with like the right type of guys around him uh, well, i think in the last few years he's kind of been more of a one of their main guys not like not like it isn't cgl but kind of but it's not like cgl and yeah. um and they always play with like other and this is not like a knock this is more just like a strategy thing they play with a lot of guys that are so good at posting up so they used to have elijah khan and Mets so like matchup wise it made things really hard and then they would probably rather post con one on your third biggest sure. rather than Elijah on your biggest so I don't want to say that took opportunities away from Elijah but um Elijah's a unique a unique player and uh he can dominate games sometimes yeah yeah I, like I said I don't want to leave anyone out like we had guys sacrifice a shitload of minutes you know to make you know oh yeah I mean that doesn't happen without yeah you know, I mean, like, and you know, Andrew, you know, Andrew kept us in the game our first weekend. He scored like 20 in the first half. Like, you know, that we can't get to certain spots with a lot of these guys. You know, it's not all about just Conto and Nick and, you know, even Goodman, who, you know, was all tournament. They're just, you, yeah, you just can't say, I feel, I don't, I don't want to feel like I left anyone out there. They're all, they're all awesome. And it's just, like you said, like the sacrifices that they make for the betterment of the team is incredible. For the, your of, for the betterment of your two boys. What's what's uh what's your CGL? We're, struggling, we're struggling right now, but it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. What's your CGL record? Uh, we're zero and four. Worst what's CGL said worst, worst CGL record I've ever had. I think you're you're on closed gyms. Um, I can't remember. I think so. I'll find out here. We're zero and four though. 
but did you play last week or no? No. Yeah, that's your team. Uh, yeah, you have uh, five total points. Um, my team has nineteen. It's a long season, man. Is the that, times, is that insurmountable, Seabird? Is that are you? Can you make that up? It's insurmountable in the regular season. Yeah. If there's one thing about CGL, is that there's elements to it that the NBA regular season. Depau and I have had this conversation that like, like once once you lose once in the regular season and you can't go ten and zero anymore, there's you're kind of just trying to peak and for the playoffs yeah like wins losses it's a we're just we're trying to get it right you know and we've had we've had some sub situations i have no worries i actually really like our team and everyone's lost we so. pass we pass well we shoot well we just don't have and you were there the night of the draft um we were similar to uw health in that we got a lot of number twos yeah. we we're missing the the bowl econ to a lot you know stud we haven't been blown out. That's good. We're going to take it to you tomorrow. <laughs> it's the funniest you know, I've ever seen you make. Are you going to are you going to guard Kantu again? Who's going to guard him? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, let me look. I honestly do. I told you that on Sunday. I thought you actually did a pretty good job on him on Sunday. Thank you. Better, better than when it looks like it. Like Jameson, Jameson's like, is Siebert seriously guarding Kantu? And I'm like... We'll see how this goes. Um, I mean, I can't do anything on the court much other than, I mean, I got you got to do something to stay out there. Otherwise, you, I can't dribble anymore. Um, we got a few guys that could go, that could go on them and stretches. We got four different guys that could, that I could that we could put there. I'd honestly probably rather guard Tim Franks. I don't want to give him any bullets and board material. Yeah. Their team is your team is sneaky big too, which makes it hard for us to put one of our guys on him. I'm just trying to find my team here. Like Adam Brugink. Yeah. You kind of have to account for him and, um on the glass or he'll kill you. So we had McNabb play for us last week. McNabb's playing for us tomorrow. That's it. So you can just yeah, I suppose you can just hop around other team. People need subs, you they just use him, right? Yep. Is there any is there any rule for playoffs? Uh the regular season con one handles all the subs and in the playoffs like kind of both GMs sort of have to approve it. I'll be honest, not a lot of people miss in the playoffs though. Okay, that was my next question too. I figured that that would be most most of people would be there. Um yeah, I mean tomorrow you have four subs out of 48 guys, so it's not a huge issue. Yeah. Um you know, I, frankly, I probably miss more time than anybody with driving and stuff and coaching. Yeah. But no, right. it'll, be, it'll be a good matchup tomorrow. We got a few different guys we can put on K2. The thing about CGL, you have to switch ball screens or else. So K2 can kind of pick whoever he wants to guard him. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. I got nothing else. No, thanks, man. Talk soon. Yeah, thanks, thanks for hopping on. It's way more fun to talk when they're with a guest than it is by myself. I'd, I would have, I would have recapped the Holy Cross tournament in about fifteen minutes, and this is a good hour. So, yeah, think, I'm trying to think if uh, the only thing that sucks about guarding K two tomorrow is that I don't, I'm not allowed to like foul him when he drives. <laughs> so, well, so, what do you mean? I mean, we just wrapped him up on the floor a hundred times. What do, what do you mean you're not allowed to though? I. Uh, Different. Can you call out that league? No, we play with no refs, and it's like uh, I know you play no with no refs. Call your own, and yeah. like everybody's playing in a way to like try not to foul. Does that make sense? Like you're not where when you're playing with refs, you're it's almost it's almost like it's a weird like human thought experiment. Like when you're playing with refs, you're like trying to like live in the gray area and see yeah. what you can get away with, so to yeah. speak. And when you're playing without them, you're like showing your hands and trying to be as fundamental as you possibly can. Um, so no one's like taking fouls and stuff like that in the league. No, some people foul like in transition. Honestly, that'd be a good uh, con one Sherry and K two. I know you guys are, are are listening. That'd be a good like thought process of if if we if we should look into take fouls like advantage fouls in transition being some sort of a outlawed in CGL like in Euro ball. Oh, so people will take to stop a press break. Yeah, but it's like smart. I mean, that's oh, right for sure. That's smart basketball in American basketball. That's smart basketball. Um, 
but then there'll be then there'll be like the debate of like should you call it should you not call it yeah yeah uh, and then like cuz like it's technically an offensive call offense calls fouls and like there'll be times when the defense reaches in then they all stop playing and the offense will want to keep going oh yeah sure um that's probably the weirdest like refing situation that comes up in CGL to be honest is like yeah. the, the the take foul and transition yeah okay oh, yeah. Good other than that, other than that, it's pretty uh, good dudes. Good deal. But yeah, thanks, Sam. Talk soon. Yeah, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Bye. everyone. It's been over and back.